Okay, so hello everyone, welcome to the CSRGC consultation space. Yeah, so um, this is not Eva, uh, so I'm using her account. So this is Kiki, uh, I'm the MCVP IGP, CSRGC of ISAC in Malaysia. And right now, I'm going to present you about the CSRGC consultation space. So anyone that wants to apply as a vice president of CSRGB, this is a space for you. And I will share a little bit about what are we doing in CSRGB. And you can also have a, a question and answer space if you want to ask regarding uh, the things that you are confused on uh, when you want to apply in this position. Okay, so first I want to explain uh, briefly about the job description that we have in CSRGB. So, yeah, so as you can see, basically um, for CS IGV, there is a little bit of difference between tier because of the capacity that we see uh, based on the operations. So, uh, first of all, I want to explain to you uh, regarding the tier 3 and tier 4 only. So, if you're confused about what is tier 3 and tier 4, so this is the banding, um, like the level of um, your LC. And um, Isaac in Malaysia based on the OD model. And if you're confused uh, regarding which tier are you on, you can ask your LCP regarding um, which tier that uh, I'm currently in uh, my LC right now, especially in IGB. Okay, um, so uh, right now I want to explain uh, regarding to um, tier 3 and tier 4 for incoming global frontier. So for this part, uh, basically, um, for tier 3 and tier 4, uh, we're not going to divide into two um, fast precedents. So basically, if you're currently in tier 3 and tier 4, uh, there will only be one fast precedent of IGB, which will handle PBOX and MCR. So um, basically, your main job description is exchange management. So exchange management is mostly on an analysis of exchange performance, locally, nationally, and internationally. Mm. So uh, for exchange management, is basically the core of what uh, uh, exchange product uh, should do. So develop and implement exchange growth strategies, build and manage exchange partnership through MCLC and LC2LC, handle NGOs in enlarging the capacity of IGV, ensure 100% of customer flow implementation, and ensure the application of system standards. So basically for exchange management, the simple way of how are you going to do it is customer flow. So for IGV, the customer flow uh, will be handled from attraction to brand efficacy because there will be no marketing uh, for IGV in the first person level. So the one that is going to handle all the customer flow for IGV is going to be the first president. And then the second one will be PBOX management uh, for PBOX and non-corporate relation management for MCR. So um, maybe some of you are still confused regarding what is the difference between PBOX and MCR. So basically, a PBOX is a project based on exchange. So it's a project that is created uh, from the entity and from the initiative that you have based on the impact that you want to create on the society. So basically, a PBOX uh, project is a project that is created from scratch or from zero. For example, uh, we also have a PBOX initiative from National, which is Speak Up, Clean Our Plate, and Cycle for Change. Oh no, Cycle for Change is MCR, so currently we have Speak Up and Clean Our Plate. Cool. And then for the next is non-corporate relation management. So for NCR, it's basically an NGO-based project where you just um, have a cooperation with the NGO on how should the EP contribute to the NGO to compare to the NGO. Yeah. So that is basically the core differences between PBOX and NCR. Okay. Cool. So I'm going to move next. Yeah. And then the next thing is uh, team management, of course, especially for incoming global frontier. Um, the team that you will have for uh, the core team that you will have for IGC is mostly the OC team. So how you make sure that you can create the OC team based on the strength strength that is needed um, on the project, and then how you make sure that you can leverage on the strength each IGC to project directors and OCP collaboration. Yeah. So uh, basically, for IGV, the structure will be you will have a project directors. And below the project directors, project directors is the OCP, and below that you we will have OC team that will handle each of the project. So how you make sure that you can also handle team management um, from from your directors and also from the OC team. 
and then the next will be the synergy management. So because IGV, basically the synergy will be mostly on PD, uh, because in the future uh, the RC will have PD and then FL and also PM. Mm. So your I will explain regarding the synergy in the next slide. And the next would be national plenary. So, for example, represent ISAC in Langkawi in the national plenary with other EB members. So, how to make sure that uh, you, as a vice president, you will represent your RC regarding IGB. And then, how to make sure that you, as a vice president, can align um, your entity to national direction and fill in monthly and quarterly sonar report throughout the term. Cool. So, that is for tier three and tier four. And Basically, if you see next is I will explain the uh, for tier one and tier two only, which is the difference that there will be um, incoming global frontier for T box and incoming global frontier for NCR. Basically, the job description will be still the same, but that the differences is because we think that tier one and tier two are capable to drive more growth. So we decide that it's possible if you can open a two fast precedent for P box and NCR. Mm. So one, um, RCP P box will focus on P box project, which is um, you can also join national initiatives and also create your own local projects. And for NCR, it's mostly on how can you engage uh, and open more opportunities for. Um, and so that is the job description. Um, yeah, is everyone still following me currently? Okay, so can you hear me? If anyone can uh, can hear and clear about my explanation, can you put on the chat so I can confirm or if there's something that is... Okay, cool. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, cool. So I will move next. Um, so after job description, I will move next to key synergies. Yeah. Okay, cool. So right now I will move to key synergies. So for key synergies is how can you actually, what is the thing that you can do as an IGP uh, to have a synergy with, uh, with especially uh, PM, FL, and also PD. Okay, so for IGP and PM, uh, your synergy is mostly on L&D implementation. So how do you make sure that you can deliver um, learning and development to your members and OC? And performance of uh, EP lead planning, things are tracking and information. Yeah. So why I put also EP lead planning is because PM is also functional that is handling uh, developing. So how to make sure that you and PM are collaborating together to create a session that can be delivered to the EP? Uh, because during um during the realization, you need to deliver it to an EP to facilitate the inner and outer journey. So how you make sure that you can uh, have a synergy with your PM willing to plan for an EP lead uh, session and program. Cool. And the next is IGC and FL. So mainly your collaboration will be more on budget review. So how you make sure that your project budget review are accepted by FL and basically are supporting the organizational sustainability. And the next one should be OC finance education because the proposal uh, proposal structure from national is every project should have a person that is handling the budget of the project. So how to make sure that FL is also contributing in educating the OC finance. And the next should be return on investment for project. So how to make sure your project is also getting a return. So not only break even and also lost. Mm. So how to make sure that you can plan your project based on return also. And then the last one is project audit. So uh, for sneak peek, um, me, Audrey, and, F uh, and Cynthia, so uh, me, PD, and FL, we will collaborate together to um, to create an audit system. So how to make sure that we can actually sustain the project that is still um, relevant and sustainable for the entity. And then uh, how to make sure that we can make this project continuous and sustainable. So we will um, create this project audit system, and it will be launched around December. So um, there will be this is just a sneak peek, uh, but then later, as a vice president, you should collaborate uh, with your FL also regarding the project audit, because mainly the project audit will be also consisting on budget review and how are you utilizing your budget 
during the project realization. Okay, and then the next one is RGV and PD. So RGV and PD is mostly on measurement of impact. So how you make sure that you also can collaborate in, uh, with PD regarding uh, how are you going to measure the impact of your project, um, and also uh, getting um, getting uh, information and insights from partners regarding the impact that we're giving, especially for NCR. Um, basically because that um, the person that is going to handle partnership is mainly PD and then we are the one that is going to support PD uh, in fulfilling the partnership with purpose. And the second one should be project income. So how to make sure that PD is supporting IGV in getting revenues and incomes from the project. Uh, it can be cash and also it can be in kind. And the third one is partnership with purpose. So how you make sure again that I mentioned before is how you make sure that you can also collaborate with PD in fulfilling the partnership deliverables. And the last one is the project audit also. Okay, so. Okay, cool. So until now, do you still have any question that you want to ask? Is it so cool? Okay, um, can you give me a minute? Um, I want to check regarding the uh, system. Okay. Okay, I'm back. Sorry, uh, this is a really new uh, app for me, but I hope that this is also can make everyone that cannot attend today can also see um, the session that I'm delivering now. Okay, so I will continue. And next is going to be key performance indicator. So as an IGV fast president, how uh, what is the thing that you need to achieve, and what is the progress that you need to track uh, regarding your performance? Okay, so. Yeah, basically uh, the differences for the KPI is only based on uh, if your entity is going to have PD or not because uh, basically CX IGV will more focus on youth experience rather than partnership experience. Um, so basically the main KPI of um, incoming Google Volunteer is going to be uh, number of GV forms opened number of applicants number of number of accepted number of approved realized and completed. So this is like the basic things that um, we track, we always track uh, for you as a vice president of IGV. Um, and then next is a uh, number of re raised GV forms. Uh, this is not, uh, I want to clarify again, so re raised GV forms is not a form for partner, so it's like a DMF form. So for example, if one LC have project A, and then the project is going to be sustainable because uh, financially and based on the impact that this project can be sustained uh, for the next week. So um, you can also re-raise this form and open like, for example, uh, project A 2.0, like this kind of thing. Um, and then the, three, the third one is a number of LC partnerships form, uh, which is IR, international relations. So how, um, okay. So who is fewer thirty? Um, wait, uh, can me can you let me uh, finish first, and then we're going to have a Q and a Q and A session after this. Okay, um, I will continue. So our LC partnerships form is basically on IR, and this is an LC to LC partnerships. So for example, if uh, you have a partnership with an LC in Hong Kong. So that is counted as number of LC partnerships form. And then uh, for LC partnerships, uh, it can be in form of uh, agreement, but also it can be a form of like goal setting and objectives of what you want to achieve, uh, for example, in winter peak or summer peak. Yeah, so it doesn't have to be an agreement. Um, but if you have a goal and, and an objective that you want to achieve as LC partnerships, it's actually counted as an LC partnerships. And the next one is net promoter score. Uh, basically, you can also find it out in the expa. And ratio of GV over TL and TM conversion means that as simple as productivity. So, for example, um, if you have a 10 uh, member in your IGV team, how many 
uh, GC numbers that you are achieving based on the, those 10 numbers of uh, member. So how you make sure that your team is also productive and you as a leader are also ensuring that all of your members are actually doing uh, their own job description. And then the next one is number of EP lead implementations. So how to make sure that you can also implement lead for EP during the realization. And then also project impact achieved based on your DMF form. And the next one is impact report publish. Okay, so this is uh, for uh, tier one, two, and three, which is the tier that has PD. And for the tier that doesn't have PD is not a percent of partnership deliverables achieved, and then the rest is still the same with the previous one. Why is percent of partnership deliverables achieved? Is because that we think um, to make sure that the IGV project are sustainable, we are not recommended you to actually find a lot of partners, new partners. So how to make sure that you can only focusing on the current partners and the main KPI that you need to achieve is actually is uh, how you make sure that the partnership developers are achieved. And then uh, how you make sure that you also have a really consistent customer relationship management with the opportunity provider uh, for your project or the NGO for your um, NCR project. Yeah, so um, that is for the KPI. So for the KPI, is there any question for this part? This is so cool. Um, and you, everyone, you can hear me, right? Okay, cool. Okay, I will continue again. Um, so after KPI, we're going to move to timeline. So maybe some of you have seen this one. Um, yeah. So this is the main timeline of um IGC. So for November and December is um, this is for summer peak, actually. Yeah, uh, I think it's it's summer peak, so this is the timeline for summer peak. So November and December is actually um, you already need to start to prepare attraction. Means that what is um, the kind of project that you want to prepare uh, for the next um, for the next peak, which is summer, and then for um, for this uh, summer, we're going to close the open uh, project on February. Um, so how to make sure that you also prepare since January and December. Mm. So we're going to close the open project on February and then uh, during January, February and March, if you already open the project early, earlier, you can do attraction earlier or so. Yeah, because March is actually the global peak for attraction. And then um, for April and May, it's going to be consideration peak, which is um, in April, it will be the global peak. And then during May, you need to prepare already for uh, value delivery. And then the realization will be around July, August, and also September. Yeah, but mainly the peak for summer is going to be July and August. Um, and I want to emphasize again why we need to follow the global peak. So um, our key learning for this year is actually um, some of the big entities such as entities in Latin America and Europe they actually already closed their signups and um, sending people abroad is because the global peak or attraction is already closed. Yeah, so imagine that again in summer we are late in this timeline. We are going to lose um, a lot of entity partners that is actually uh, formidable, uh, formidable to uh, supply a lot of EPs to Malaysia. So how to make sure that for summer we already prepare and gear up uh, for following the global peak. Um, that is basically for the timeline, and this one is the national direction. Okay, so basically, um, this is the a roadmap uh, of ISAC 2020, and for us as a exchange product, basically, uh, the things that we want to achieve in the ISAC roadmap is to improve our current products. So, how to make sure that we can actually improve our current product and make it sustainable? So, the first one is market fit. So, market fit is how to make sure that for us, as ISAC in Malaysia, we actually provide a project that is actually a fit with the needs of all of the global network. So, for example, right, uh, we open a project on during um, for winter is we open a lot during January. But then, if we see in another bigger perspective, actually there's not there's not a lot um, there's actually a lot of uh, entity that is uh, able to send EP on January. But then, if you see, there's actually more entities that uh, are able to send EPs during March and April. 
So how to make sure that in the future and currently, we are actually can provide a lot of opportunities to a lot of people across the globe. And then the second one is supply and demand management. So how to make sure that we can actually, uh, if we know that we have a demand of opportunities from our entity partners or from the global network, how can we actually fulfill the supply of opportunities to them? And then the third one is process optimization. So how to make sure that we have a fast process time and we also have a good conversion rate. So for example, how to make sure that um, if you have a lot of uh, applicants, how to make sure that the, those applicants are converted into accepted. And then how to make sure that we don't make our customers wait uh, for more than two weeks or one week. So how to make sure that we also make our process faster. And then four is MOS completed. Again, how to make sure that we are delivering a completed experience or EPs. And then the uh, next one is product development plan. So for example, if you want to create a sustainable project, if you want to uh, grow up your project to be more impactful, you want to include a lot of partners, how to make sure that you also have the plan to improve it, and product growth strategy. Product growth strategy is, for example, if you want to improve um, the growth or authorization of completed uh, from this current term, uh, and for example, in your term, when you are elected as RCC. And this is the, our main battle as a IGV, a CX IGV, yeah. And this is the thing that we are uh, fighting for uh, and if you're elected for your next one year. Okay, um, so basically this is also can, uh, you can also see that this is basically the thing that you will do and the challenges that you will face during your uh, term as the first president of IGV. Yeah, and okay, so right now um, I will open a QA and a space. So actually we have, a lot of time. Um, uh, the session will be held for around one hour, so we still have around 30 minutes left. Okay, so maybe for someone that cannot hear currently and want to ask question, I will open the question and answer space right now. Okay, so anyone wants to ask questions regarding or clarifying the parts that you are missing? Okay, so um, the first question is, are there any changes in the tiering system for IGP for performance? Can I clarify uh, which part of IGP, IGP performance that you mean? Is it like, um, for example, if you don't uh, like, how to say, uh, is it, for example, if you perform this uh, exchanges? Yeah, okay, um, okay, cool. So for the tiering system, uh, currently, uh, show me the MCP of OD are planning to uh, finalize the OD model. So we're going to improve the tiering system um, for IGV also. Uh, and then for that, we're going to finalize, um, we're going to finalize in terms of uh, how many exchanges that we should have uh, if you want to enter like tier one, tier two, tier three, like tier four. Yeah, so there will be changes and we will inform to you very soon. But then uh, for this part, I'm going to just briefly explain to you of what it's going to be if you're currently aspiring to be tier one or tier two. And this is the things that is possible for you. And if you're currently in a tier three or tier four, um, this is the suggested, uh, suggest, suggested structure and job description that you need to have based on your current capabilities and for your entity sustainability. Yeah, so if that is answering, do you have any more clarification for that? Okay, cool. Yeah. Is there any more question? Uh, if someone just arrived, uh, we currently have a question and answer session. 
So if you want to get a clarification regarding um, the job description, the synergy, the KPI, national reduction, or if you're clear, um, you can just say cool or wave. Um, yeah, so we can actually close this space. Um, yeah. And then I will share this recording to, uh, I will put it on the ISAC Hub. So if you have your team members that are actually interested that cannot uh, join today, um, they can access it. Okay. okay. So um, the question is actually pretty specific. So how to increase the number of EP applications if it's very slow progressing? Yeah, so I think uh, currently, if I can assess the current reality that is happening for this winter, is we are actually pretty slow is because that we are not planning enough regarding following the global timeline. Yeah, so for example, if you're still uh, searching for applicants right now, there will be not much of a demand of opportunities is because that some of the entities, like bigger entities, they're actually progressing on uh, getting approvals. Mm. So they are not focusing on sending people abroad again. So how to make sure that in the summer summer peak, you actually have a plan for what kind of attraction um, attraction planning or attraction method that we're going to do to attract, um, to attract the OGV of another entity and also following the global peak timeline. And if we actually follow the global peak timeline, there will be a lot of demand and we can actually have a time to uh, filter and assess which kind of EPs are suitable for our project. Yeah, so if it's very slow progressing, I think the suggestion that I can give it to you is have a really uh, close intact with the IR partners um, that you have and with the entity that you think is possible uh, regarding the university timeline and uh, for example regarding the requirements that your project needs and then you have a close contact with them um, Give them a lot of information regarding your project, so it will be really clear FISA information and this kind of thing. So they actually are have a lot more possibilities of sending a lot of um, EPs to your project, even though that it's not following your time, it's not following the global peak timeline anymore. Yeah. So the thing that I suggested to you currently in this situation is just to have a close communication with your IR partners and with our entities that you want to focus on. Yeah. So that's why I put the timeline uh, for this part also is because timeline is actually very important for IGV especially is because that we, we are not the only um, IGV especially in Asia Pacific. Uh, we have a lot of competitors and how to make sure that we actually can uh, show our unique um, our unique uniqueness of Malaysia especially in IGV to a lot of EPs that are interested to have an, a volunteering project especially in Asia Pacific. Asia -Pacific. Yeah, I think that is the thing that I can suggest. Um, if there's no questions uh, regarding the job description, key synergies, KPI, um, timeline, or national direction, um, is there any more question? Maybe, um, is it very clear, actually, the job description that you will do? And for the KPI also? Because actually, um, for IGC, um, the thing that you will do is basically going to be the same for summer and winter, but then the thing inside it, like the challenges, different people that you are going to work with is the development that actually um, building you to be a better person, especially in ISI. Because in IGP, um, the, the thing that you do inside is very dynamic. You will face a lot of different people. Um, also, you will work with different kind of challenges because for example, you will work with different partners, different NGOs, different um, learning partner, uh, even though you have the same project. So how to make sure that you can also be agile and you actually plan to face this kind of thing and you are ready for uh, for crisis management. Um, and this is the thing that actually, from my perspective, is going to develop you if you want to search for development in this organization. And then uh, fun fact also, actually based on my experience uh, for IGV, this, uh, for IGV usually the pipeline is actually um, there's a lot of uh, pipeline for MCs and I, uh, LCPs that's actually from dysfunctional. Is I think it's because that um, dysfunctional ex itself is very challenging. We are faced with a lot of um, how to say we are faced with a lot of probabilities that's going to happen during the project. Uh, but then this is the thing that is training us to be more better um, and also develop us um, in this organization. Yeah, I think that is the personal thing that I can share uh, for being in IGV. Um, 
yeah, actually it's pretty challenging. But then if you really want to search for um, a good development in this organization, I think uh, IGP is one of the good functionals for you to join in, especially being a vice president of IGV. Yeah, um, cool. So if there's no question, okay. So next question, how do PD synergize with IGV for measurement of impact? Okay, so for this part is basically you're going to have um, a measurement of impact um, report. And then what you can do with PD is actually uh, how to make sure that uh, PD can also assist you regarding um, the partnership. So for example, because the impact is not only for the students, for example, but also for the partners and for the society. And then uh, PD can also uh, ask the partners regarding uh, the information that they get, uh, what is happening in the society and also in the NGO that uh, we invite the volunteers, volunteers to um, do a volunteering project in there. And then regarding the IGP report, uh, actually, why PD is also there? Because PD can also use this report to search for another partners to get sponsorship and also in time. Yeah. So this is more on to the PD syner uh, synergize for measurement of, in in measurement of impact. Because actually, why is it really important is because we can use this report to actually showcase to externals regarding how impactful a project is. And we can actually get support from that because it's actually data. and um, Data can show that actually what is the thing that we're doing and it's um, clear uh, information of what is our project uh, going to be. So if you want to get sponsorship uh, or support from externals, uh, we can get it more easier because of those data. Yeah, I think it's for that part. Okay, so next question is, as PD will be taking over some IGP's previous responsibility, uh, the initial conducting and approaching of enablers, Will this affect IGP abilities to find an enabler suited for a trace project? Um, I think it's in the terms of synergy. That's why you will need a synergy with PD. Also regarding um, what is the thing uh, that is suitable for the project. And then uh, the thing is for creating the report also, the DMF report, um, why you also need PD to be there is because that you are the one that's actually more aware of what is the impact that you want to create based on the project. And then the PD part is actually just to approach the externals regarding um, what kind of externals that's actually suitable from the project that you want to create. And then after you get the externals, you can actually um, create the fully completed report of what is going to be the key activities during the project. And then after that, you can publish the DMF report to open the project. Yeah, so um, I think it's not going to affect a lot, but I think it's in the more in the terms of how can you synergize with the PD to actually get everything clear. Yeah, in terms of there's no miscommunication regarding what is the impact that you want to create from the project. And then uh, because PD will have more intense capacity to do customer relationship management. So because imagine if you are CSIGP, you need to take care of your EPs, you need to take care of uh, process time, IR, and then you also need to do customer relationship management with the partners. It's going to be overwhelming, and then you're not going to focus on the core things that you need to do as CSIGP. Yeah, so that's why uh, for this kind of thing, uh, we're putting it on PD because PD can also focus on having uh, delivering a fully partnership new service to the partners and also do a customer relationship management such as ma maintenance um, to the partners and also visit the partners and getting feedbacks, getting um, insights regarding how to improve the project and this kind of thing. Uh, and then you as a sales IGP, you can focus on the youth experience more, which is the EP's experience. Yeah. So I think if that's answering, is it clear? Okay, cool. So, um, yeah, is there any more questions for IGP? Yeah, so basically the things that is going to be much more clearer for the next term is that for six IGP, you're mainly going to focus on youth. Okay, so uh, you cannot hear anything. Have you downloaded the app, the Join Me application? Yeah, if you cannot hear, um, I will uh, publish this recording later. Okay, so can you please repeat the differences between JD of Tier 1 and 2 and Tier 3 and 4? Okay. Yeah. So basically, um, the differences is not 
not that different. It's just mostly on the structure. So for tier one and tier two is, um, it is possible for you to have two separate vice president for PBOX and FCR, while for tier three and tier four is, um, you will only have one PP IGP that's handling both NCR and PBOX because of the capacity. Yeah. So uh, for tier one and tier two, you can actually focus on growing uh, both in PBOX and NCR because you will have two different uh, two different PP that's going to have different direction. But for IGP, it's mostly uh, for tier three and tier four. Why I why we put one PP IGP is because for tier three and tier four, we you just want to focus on sustainability and how to make sure that your projects are sustained and stable before you can actually focus on growth. Yeah, but the job description is the same. Yeah, mainly it's just uh, differences on the structure. Yeah, so that is the difference uh, for tier one and tier two and also tier three and tier four. Yeah. So is it clear? Okay. Okay, cool. So we still have around 10 minutes left. Um, 10 minutes left. Is there any question? If not, I think you can just say cool or wave. Um, yeah. Okay. Wave. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay, cool. Maybe I can ask all of you um, here in the chat is actually um, uh, like for joining the session, right? Do you actually um, are still confused of which, uh, which uh, position that you're going to apply or who are here that is actually really, really want to apply as CP and GP? Or like, for example, have have a background in doing IGP or like maybe it are some of you are from different functional? Is anyone in here uh, are from different functional besides IGP? No one is somewhere everyone is from uh, oh from BD. Oh great. Oh, from PD, ah, uh? uh, it's not really different. Well, PD for IGV, <laughs> cool. Yeah, yeah, especially for PD for IGV. Uh, I think you will now uh, experience uh more in uh like because you also mostly uh, handling partners, right? And then right now as a CF IGV, you're mo mostly handling EPs and also uh, IR partners. Yeah. So because CF IGV will more more focus on youth. And then PD will mostly uh morally focus on partnership um and also enablers. Who IGV ha huh? Rocketeers? Okay, so uh I think uh if uh anyone in here are not from IGV, so actually we have a commission name. Uh, our commission name is um okay sorry okay so our commission name is Rocketeers. So actually Rocketeers uh is for CF IGV and previously PD for IGV. So if you're joining uh, the network in the future, you will be joining in the Rocketeers family. Yay. <laughs> yeah. And then um, yeah, you will get a cool t-shirt um, in the future if you join our functional. Fun, right? So apply as a PP IGV for the next term. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, I think if there's no question, um, <laughs> Mike, I'm going to run for PP IGP. Hey, you already elected as LCP. Yeah. So, yeah. So make sure you will have a good CP IGP, yeah, Mike. Okay, cool. Cool. So I think uh, that's all uh, because there's no questions. Um, and then, okay. So there's actually a question. What's the national direction for IGP next year? Um, so basically, uh, I, I is going to be still the same. Uh, it's mainly focusing on how can we actually improve our um, uh, which means that uh, market segment and grow product development, like this kind of thing. And then uh, how can we actually achieve, like for nationally, 
uh, we we aim for 1,288 completes uh, for IGP. Yeah, and then actually for uh, the next term, for the if you're going to be elected as VP of IGP, um, uh, right now we're going to start uh, planning for you regarding how can you actually prepare for summer because summer is going to be the biggest pick, especially for IGP, and that uh, as VP of IGP. You need to start preparing regarding what is um, the thing that you need to learn before you start um, doing the operations on hand when you're elected. Okay, yeah, so I think it's still pretty much the same. Um, okay, then, yeah, I think that's all for this EV consultation. Uh, if you have more Q&A, um, you can actually text us at MC Malaysia inbox. Uh, we're going to make our MC Malaysia page more active, so if you want to get more information regarding our campaign, uh, regarding EB application, and the things that you can learn, you can check our MP Malaysia Facebook page. And then for output, um, I will share to you in the comment uh, in the comment box uh, below later um, regarding where can you access this recording and also the presentation. And then feedback is good, so uh, I hope that you can learn a lot of things of uh, from this session. So uh, please take picture of this uh, feedback form, a bit the ly slash tb concept slash um, uh, stripe feedback, uh, slash feedback uh, for the feedback for this EB. So maybe we can have more EB consultation space uh, if you really want to learn more and prepare to apply as CP of IGV. Yeah, I think that's all. Thank you everyone for coming. I hope that you can get a lot of insights and be more sure that you will apply as VP of IGB. Yeah, I think that's all. Thank you everyone for coming. Bye bye.